The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into three lines has worked in the ASIC Financial Advisors Stakeholder Team as an analyst. Ooh, yeah. Want to learn more about that? Is part of a, of a building, actually, Perth RedTech community um, and is in the unique position of kicking off a tech startup that was very quickly profitable who can believe that's even possible? Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Julia Vojkovic, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Wes, I'm so happy. And actually, before we dive in, we'll dive into our questions and the audience know what's coming in terms of getting to know you better. But I am actually a little curious about Perth and how there's some sort of building players that are playing in red tech. How's that come about? Like what's going on with you guys over there? I think Perth is a real hub for um, startups, for RegTab. There's a real budding community of startups over here. So um, it's very supportive, uh, very collaborative. Um, Yeah, so we've been very lucky to be over here. It was just an accident that we got into tech. But, yeah, we've been in the right place at the right time. So It's so interesting, isn't it? So it's... Yeah, and, and look, the listeners may, may not be aware, but they're sort of, well, of course, we're all aware of Silicon Valley, right? And so when you look at the biggest players that have come out in globally, you know, they all started in Silicon <laughs> Valley. But what people don't know is that that when you're in a location where there's a lot of that going on, then there are people that can help. There's can, people that can create shortcuts for you of understanding or connect you to the right people. So often that's the magic. Absolutely. And just the um, mentoring that comes out of it, and people are just so happy to help you out and give you advice and tips. Um, that's been the best part, I think, of being over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it doesn't, I mean, just like with um, starting a financial advice business, you don't actually have to do this all on your own. You know, and exactly. in fact, Ensemble, <laughs> that's what we're all about. We're all, like, get on the platform, talk to each other. You're not on your own, you know. And yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And so those communities are so, so important. All right. So before we do dive into three lines, then let's get to know you through your use of technology. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I use emojis all day, every day. Um, <laughs> being the mother of three young kids, I would say there are two. One is the crying, laughing face, and the other <laughs> is the um, vomit face because everyone's – there's always somebody who's sick in this house. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love how context defines so much of this in terms of our lives. <laughs> it's fantastic. And if we, I know I'm imagining there's a lot of coordination. If you've got kids that happen via your smartphone, if you had to wipe everything off the phone and just keep three apps, which three would you keep? Um, so firstly would be WhatsApp. Um, that's mm-hmm. just as, you know, obviously stay in touch and up to date with people. Um, secondly, Spotify. Love my podcast. Love your podcast. So I, I keep Spotify. And mm-hmm. my third... Um, I'd keep realestate.com out because looking at real estate, looking at houses that I can't afford is my guilty pleasure. 
Um, it's my favourite thing to do. <laughs> so oh, I love that. it. There's nothing better. <clears throat> I love, I, I've even cheekily got to the point of send, you know, you can click inquire in realestate.com.au oh, yes. and you can just set a, a price and it comes back and my husband Absolutely. and I will just be rolling around laughing as the the very keen real estate agent comes back with the $12.5 million property value. <laughs> You're like, oh, like, oh bless. I just wanted to know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I try not to waste their time too much now, but I believe actually a lot of that's automated now, so it's all good. Um, yeah. But, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So let's dive into three lines. So let's do it. There will be some listeners that won't be aware of um, what you guys provide, but I think also may not be aware really of much of the existence of reg tech as opposed to, you know, broader, more advanced technology. So what you sit under the reg, reg tech sort of category, but who you're generally lined up against, what sort of broad um, category of services are you guys as, you know, three lines as an app, you know, sit yeah. alongside? Well, it might help if I give you a bit of background as sort of to how three lines came to be because that will give mm. you some context. So predominantly, as you mentioned, Three Lines is a reg tech company, um, and it started about uh, four years ago now, I would say. Um, my business partner, Eloise Summerford, and I developed Three Lines. Um, yep. We have backgrounds, both of us, spanning ASIC, big four professional services firms, um, and our worlds collided probably uh, eight or nine years ago now when we met um, taking on similar roles at Macquarie Private Wealth. Okay. Um, Macquarie at the time was in an EU, so they had a lot of work to get through um, in order to yes. um, meet their compliance obligations as a mm. financial services license. Um, and so after Macquarie wrapped up the EU, everything was kind of settled down. We were ready for a new challenge. So we decided to step out of Macquarie and start mm-hmm. our own compliance consulting firm focused on AFSLs. Um, and that was probably about seven years ago that we started our compliance uh, consulting firm. Um, and when we were providing our consulting services at the start, in probably the first couple of years, it was all very manual. So we were uh, mm. managing a lot of spreadsheets and documents for clients, um, and our clients were doing everything manually as well. So they were keeping spreadsheets here, there, and everywhere. Um, and we found that in terms of servicing our clients, we were spending much more time on um, manual uh, formatting of documents and Excel spreadsheets and the like, rather than actually providing advice and guidance to our clients and uh, giving them value. Um, yep. And we just so we just knew that there had to be a better way to do things. We we mm. searched high and low for a, a product or a software solution that would service our needs, um, and especially uh, I guess more so than our needs, but the needs of our clients as well. Mm. So um, we couldn't find what we wanted, um, and we couldn't find what our clients needed. So we set upon the uh, what we thought was a wise decision <laughs> of making it <laughs> ourselves. Um, looking back, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. We do love it. <laughs> today, but um, we have been through many ups and downs along the way. Um, So we became kind of accidental tech entrepreneurs, um, if you will. Um, And I guess that's kind of how we came to be. So Reg Tech is a a space where we provide regulatory compliance software and we focus on AFSL. So there's a lot of other compliance platforms out there that are very generic and they um, can be tailored to um, many different industries. Ours yep. is very, com- uh, sorry, every is very AFSL specific. So we have been, yeah, AFSLs are our target market, um, and we've developed the software around specifically what an AFSL needs to comply with all of the regulatory obligations that they need to. Okay, and so in terms of then the problem, so <laughs> I mean, there's layers of this, right? So there's the immediate, like you say, the admin organization, coordination, multiple places and information everywhere sort of challenge. So that's sort of getting organized generally. But I guess the other problem it's trying to solve is is making the sort of um, collation and response to say issues or even information and, and registers, making it a habit, like a real habit rather than a painful manual habit. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think that's one of the pain points for people who aren't or licensees that aren't using some sort of software to help them with their manage their compliance obligations is that you have everything sort of saved in a million different places. You don't know what you don't know. So it's really easy to be overwhelmed by all of the compliance mm. obligations and also to even miss things because you just uh, have no kind of process or um, framework around what you're doing. Um, yep. So that's really um, one of the big pain points for licensees. Um, so with three lines, everything is housed in one place. You know that if you log on and you make that a daily habit or a you know weekly habit or what have you, if you're using it in your day-to-day operations to manage compliance, then mm. if you're keeping up with each module in the system, then hopefully you are on, well on your way to having a compliant business. 
Perfect. And why don't we actually start? I would normally ask this a bit later, but I noticed on your website you have an RM sort of online boot camp. Oh, did yes, that, we do. Yep. Yeah. So did that come about um, as a way to help people build that habit? It's like, all right, let's, let's get you to a certain point yeah, so you're so- aware of what you should be aware of. Absolutely. So through our consulting business, when we were running that, and we still have um, a sister consulting firm now, Three Lines Consulting, um, and that's what it's got its own managing director. So Eloise and I work very much on the platform side, and then we have the consulting business that kind of works hand in hand with the platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so through consulting, we do we sort of have a full suite of uh, AFSL compliance services in our offering, um, and we help clients from the very get-go when they obtain their AFSL or when they're in that process of deciding whether to get an AFSL and become self-licensed. Um, and we find that a lot of people were either applying or submitting to ASIC to be an RM of a license, or they were, you know, recently appointed but didn't really have a good understanding of what that entails. Um, mm. And we know that there's a few different uh, course providers out there, but um, our uh, product differs in that it's an online course, so it's a set of I think nine virtual lessons. Um, yep. You get 12 months access to the course, so it's not live. So if you want to uh, learn at your own pace and log out, log back in and do everything in kind of bite-sized chunks, you can do that. Um, Mm -hmm. And then if you watch the whole course and maybe six months down the track, you have an incident or a breach and you just want to understand, uh, again, what you need to do in order to remain compliant, you can log back in um, and have another quiz at the lesson and the quizzes. Um, There are CPD points available in that as well. Um, And we also update it regularly with bonus lessons as well. So, uh, for example, a couple of months ago, ASIC did update the guidance in terms of incident and breach reporting to ASIC. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we've updated that with a lesson so that licensees or RMs can um, remain aware of what they need to do. So everything is kind of constantly updated. And it is, it's an interesting, um, look, this is a really interesting area because I think to date, well, no, not now. I would have said, what year are we in? 2023, at least up to sort of 2015 or, or later, the, the compliance like broad, you know, license land yep. and compliance was a mystical art. Like mm-hmm. it did, really everybody yeah. outside of it just saw it. They didn't see science as much as they saw this sort of mystic approach and it was very hard to apply structure and logic from the outside. Confident there was lots oh, of that inside. I feel know, like that from, was um, the case inside as well, right? Right. Um, the, the last 10 years or so, we've seen layer upon layer of regulation be released. Nothing's been to date clawed back. It's just layer yeah. upon layer and it keeps getting more and more. Um, and so it's really overwhelming for a licensee to understand yeah. what their obligations are and how to address them. Um, yes. That's very overwhelming and that's what we hear all the time. So our sort of philosophy is to make things simple, um, to keep things efficient and to do sort of to uh, maybe like lower the bar a little bit, um, still yep. remain re- like uh, remain compliant and meet all your base level regulatory obligations, but don't go too far over and above. Just meet what you need to, keep it simple, and if you want to down the track uh, go higher, aim higher, then absolutely do that. But just um, keeping things at a base level you know, in the short term is probably a good place to start. Yeah, and I think, look, there's this in- interesting spectrum for, uh, you know, regulatory environments, which is, you know, all the way on the right end of the spectrum is the lawyer who would really prefer we didn't have clients. I mean, if they were really truthful, <laughs> your average lawyer would just prefer we didn't have clients because that means the risk is zero, right? So, and then all the way over the other end um, is, you know, the salesperson going hard of just engaging with the problem without any sort of construct. And and in the middle of that spectrum is compliance. And they're the people trying yes. to balance commercial reality and, and that's this legislative right. environment. We, and we always say that we always try to balance uh, the commercial aspect of the business with compliance. So we we come to it with very much a point of view of keeping it simple, remaining commercial, but also just meeting a base level of regulatory compliance. That's kind of the yeah. sweet spot, I think. Yeah. And like you say, there's there's um, all of us with new habits need to start at a level that's manageable because if you don't, if you don't get that right, you can't add the other layers. You know, you can't dive in at this top level with all sorts of things. You just get it wrong you know, and it's just Uh a mess. And so I like the idea of having the foundational sort of level handled, structured, you know, really sort of bouncy ball approach. And then you can just start adding layers to that. And that those layers will probably be more personal depending Mm -hmm. on your license, depending on who you look after. And yes, and and we always say that it does need to be, um, your compliance program does need to be tailored to the size and nature of your business. And that's what ASIC expects as well. So they don't expect um, a one-man band self-licensed 
business to have the policies and procedures of, say, IWF. They just don't expect that. So it can yeah. be very much tailored to suit the business. So let's talk about the user then. Is the expectation that really your users are um, of the app itself are just the RMs or do you see in practices as they get bigger, there's other people in the team that end up utilising yeah, the tool? Yeah, so we um- – that's a really great question because we have been really pleasantly surprised as to the broad demographic of the clients that we've got, right? So um, our primary users are, or our primary targets are, of course, AFS licensees. Um, mm-hmm. And so the, it's designed to be a very much a whole of firm platform. So we would expect in the firm that you would have everyone from, say, your RMs, directors, if you've got an internal compliance resource or team, that they mm-hmm. would be users and also your advisors because it's all underpinned by a task management system. So where there are actions that come out of, say, representative client file reviews or compliance committee meetings you can, and, and you want to allocate tasks to various users in the business, um, mm-hmm. you can absolutely do that when everyone's a user. Um, and that way also when your advisors are, um, are users as well and they get tasks allocated to them, the person who has ownership of that task, whether it's a member of the compliance team or, say, an RM, they can have oversight of where tasks are at and get status updates and have oversight of completion of tasks and the like. So it's really designed to be a whole of firm um, platform. Yeah, okay. And so then, it, and I, we don't need to dive into the actual pricing, but have you then designed the pricing based on, say, I don't know, the number of, of authorised reps or like how have you done that to encourage more team members to take part? Yeah, you know absolutely. what it's like with tech? Yes, totally. Um, so we have got uh, about four or five different tiers of um, pricing. So it depends yeah. on the number of users you want in the system. So yes, as okay. I mentioned, we've designed the system so all of the members of the license would have access, but um, and that's the way we've designed it to be used. But, you know, so obviously that varies from licensee to licensee. Um, yeah. And then we have, you know, for those larger licensees that say have over 50 users, we will have, uh, we can come to a negotiation on pricing for them because yeah. obviously um, economies of scale and all that jazz. <laughs> yeah, look, and I think yeah. it's it's an interesting lesson that we've seen with all sorts of tech in our industry historically is is we can resist folding out the um, the tool to more people in the team because of the per head, per head rate. So it's always that balance, isn't it? You want to sort of embed yeah. some of these tools. And so making sure that we 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 really do encourage different members of the teams to pay, take part if that's really going to enhance the use yeah. of the tool. Like that's the point. We're meant to be yeah, using absolutely. 100% of all and now, of um, Yeah, and our direct subscription, we've really tried to price it to be um, really cost effective for a license if they don't want to – continue paying for, say, an external compliance consultant, we hope that the platform will make it more accessible to more licensees. So yeah, um, you'll have tried to be really fair in that regard. Yeah, and it's a, that's an interesting balance, isn't it? So you could start to, you know, utilising a tool like this to get that foundational level and then, you know, it could be an issue issues-based that you use a consultant. You know, when you come across Absolutely. something, then you go to that's somebody. That's how we've yeah. designed it. Um, and we do yeah. have also got – we've also got bespoke uh, platform offerings. So we do have other compliance consultants that use Three Lines and they yep. um, have a sort of enterprise level where they have their own branding and they can use Three Lines to service their own compliance yep. uh, clients as well. So um, we have many different um, ways that the tool can be used. Yep. And so in yep. terms of then the practices – like clearly – Clearly, you guys are, are serving, you know, with the tool, your smaller practices right through to what I'm imagining is some bigger groups um, oh, yes. have got lots of different participants. So yep. is there a way that it's implemented or or a type of business that works particularly well for or conversely that struggle? Like, is there any sort of heads up for people going, hey, you need to get this sorted first to make sure you can take advantage of three lines? I think um, if you are a responsible manager or a a manager or a director of an AFS license, no matter what size the license is, three lines can be a great tool to use. Yep. Um, for smaller licenses, what I mentioned before, we have a direct subscription and that will address all of your base level regulatory requirements. And that's um, really, as I mentioned, tail- tailored to the size and nature of your business. So um, then for mid-tier and larger licensees who may have in- certain internal stand- standards they want their advisors to meet, that's right. where we can offer the bespoke platform. So um, we have options under our bespoke platform where we can tailor the system to their specific needs. So, for example, they would might be able to bring their own audit question set if they're already using a question set for compliance file reviews, for example, okay. um, if they wanted to have their own compliance committee meeting agenda or if they wanted to take ours and kind of amend it to suit their own needs. Yeah. Um, and we can also um, offer or facilitate some multi-tenancy architecture as well. So that's just a few examples of how we can tailor the platform to meet the needs of specific licensees. 
Yeah. Um, and I guess I guess the good thing is that if licenses want or licensees want to make a change, um, it's really easy to start using three lines straight away. You can start today. You can go to our website and sign up for a direct subscription. Um, so we've built the platform to be as intuitive as possible. So there's a lot yeah. of um, it's very user friendly and it's very easy to navigate. And there's a lot of um, regulatory guidance built into the system. So you don't have to be a compliance expert to log in and sort of have an understanding of what you need to do. Um, so we've built it so that you can use it on a self-guided basis. Um, yeah. And we always set up our users with a demo as well. So if somebody registers an interest or signs up for a subscription, we'll mm-hmm. get in touch with them um, and give them a demo so that they can see the full functionality of the platform and how to use it and how to kind of um, incorporate it into their business for from a day-to-day perspective. Um, and I mentioned Three Lines Consulting before as well, So, mm. um, which is our sister consulting firm. We also have um, a module in the system called Logger Ticket. Um, so if any ad hoc or Kelly compliance queries come up along the way that a licensee wants some extra help with or an extra pair of eyes to look over, um, they can log a ticket that goes through to Three Lines Consulting and uh, one of our consultants will get in touch with the licensee to um, understand and um, maybe chat with them about what the query is and just so that they have an extra helping hand along the way. Yeah, perfect. And I think... You know, that's in the category of not knowing what you don't know, isn't it? So it's just saying, hey, exactly. this has come up and then you, your team can, well, the Three Lines Consulting team can quote. They can go, hey, look, if we were to Absolutely, help you with this, yeah. do this, but at least you've taken that next step, you know. Absolutely. And 95% of the queries are just quick five-minute phone calls just to quickly answer something. Sometimes yeah. it does sort of um, go down the path of turning into a bigger project. And in that case, then obviously the team at Three Lines Consulting will work with the client to um, scope out the project and um, obviously help them solve it as well. So um, yeah, there's yep. lots of um, there's lots of support along the way. No one's ever left sort of by themselves. There's always a helping yeah. hand if they need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then, it, I mean, I'm assuming then really, uh, I always ask this question, but for tools like this, it generally doesn't apply, is that this is not something that the end client, our end client, you know, is interfacing with clearly. But I'm betting that, I mean, there there is an extent to which in, an end client could um, or their situation could be in there that might be a remediation or a complaint clearly that could be captured within the tool. Absolutely. So um, we have all of the compliance registers built into the system. So yes, it can manage incidents, breaches, complaints, all of those types of things. Um, And, you know, you talk about that, not the end client not having access. That's absolutely true. It's really designed for licensees. But I guess Mm. um, what we always try to tell clients is like, I know we're just talking about compliance is boring to most people, except for me. I like to nerd out on compliance. Um, (laughs) But when a business invests in a in a platform such as Three Lines, I know what they're really investing is in is their competitive advantage. Um, and I guess what I mean by that is when all of your advisors are on a platform um, and using it, it drives not only a culture of compliance, but also a culture of freedom and enjoyment in giving financial advice again, because um, they're no longer being bogged down in, say, a scattergun approach to compliance. There's a process in place. Everyone knows what they need to do to address compliance efficiently and effectively. And it means they'll spend more time winning better clients and serving them which will obviously do great things for a licensee's brand and reputation. Um, and we all know with a great reputation, you can attract better talent, you can uh, have um, better clients, all of those things. So it's kind of all works together to help the licensee um, in the long term. And there is a capacity, you know, this is potentially unlocking some capacity for advisors because like you say, I mean, a lot of what what tech does is simply do the thing that we all put off and then do in one hit and gripe about. Absolutely. (laughs) And we completely understand that. We know that not everyone loves compliance like we do. Um, So we (laughs) want licensees to save time. We want want them to spend more time on doing what they love, which may be serving clients. It may even be leaving the office early and going and doing something they really enjoy in their free time. Um, But because of a program like Three Lines, they'll be able to do that rather than spending time on admin and compliance, you know, after yeah. hours. So um, the other great thing about it is that because it has all of the regulatory guidance built into the system and we update it regularly from the back end, licensees or, you know, RNs or directors don't have to worry about trawling through the Corps Act and Reg Guides um, in order to understand what they need to do to remain compliant. It's all in there yeah. for them. So again, Perfect. that's hopefully saving time, saving money for them and hopefully mitigating risk as well. So there's a hopefully yeah. a lot of benefits to clients by using that. Absolutely, because I think, you know, there is um, – certainly there is a lot of responsibility when you have, say, your own AFSL um, as opposed to yes. part of a bigger group. But but the truth is it's there's at, – at its heart, wanting to do the right thing is the first point. Like it's like the anchor point and then it's being organized yes. enough to do the right thing. 
Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's sort of two stages. Absolutely. So I think yes. the second part hasn't always been easy. Oh, I completely agree. And and I guess that's why we love what we do because we love helping licensees, you know, even from our time just doing consulting work, um, we love helping licensees to get to that place where they understand what they need to do and they are actually doing it. I think yeah. what we really need for clients to, or subscribers to be successful in using three lines is that attitude and that um the investment in wanting to be compliant. So that's where we yeah. see the best results. It doesn't matter if licensees come to us and they have nothing in place, as long as they've got that attitude and that wanting to commit to being compliant um, and they have a commitment to using the program day-to-day um, and making sure that each module is completed, that's where we see the best results for our clients. Yeah. And it is the, um, you know, I can see with a lot of these tasks, we've learned it all with, even with, say, advice, is if you have a task, create advice for this client, then that's a massive thing and it feels like really big to embark on. Whereas if you can micro-task everything, you can always knock off things in little little bunches. Yeah. You know, we can you can knock Absolutely. off this thing here and tools like this will help with that because it's sort of breaking it down into the individual elements. Yeah, and even, um, you know, with a monitoring and supervision program for representatives, so um, obviously when an advisor receives a task, that's a, that is a remediation task from a, from an audit outcome rather than something mm-hmm. that's proactively helping clients. Um, it can feel, it can. I think those types of tasks can get uh, very much lost and, you know, pushed to the wayside because there's more pressing things to do. With yeah. three lines, we have designed the system again that the tasks, as you say, are very specific to each client file in terms of remediation. So the advisor will know exactly what they need to do for that client file to make it compliant. Um, and then, yes, they can obviously, um, the, te- the management team can have oversight of the advisor completing that task. So they can follow them up. Um, you can change deadlines and things like that. So um, it's, yeah, it's trying to give the advisor every opportunity to make sure that they are up to scratch with each client file. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, do you guys integrate with any other any other tools or any other apps? So, not currently. We do have an open API, so we yep. um, are always willing and happy to talk to people about um, about integration. We haven't mm-hmm. come across anything to date that has um, been the right fit for us. Um, and being a compliance software, we're very um, we can be the second, hence our name, second or third line of defence for a licensee in terms of managing their compliance. So we're very conscious about um, the need to remain in, uh, independent. So we have to be careful yep. about who we are going to integrate with, but we are certainly open to it where the fit is right, yes. Yeah, okay. And so therefore, is this something that um, would be part of a process for within the practice would be what they need to update in the tool or what they need to you know have as tasks? Because clearly they're not going to necessarily be living in it all the time. It would just need to be a sort of a rigor or, or have, does the tool actually say – maybe send an email or something that nudges the advisor yes. when they've got to do something. Yeah, absolutely. So when um, a task or um, there is, yeah, where, where the advisor or any of the users in the system need to uh, action anything in the system, they will get an email notification. So it will speak to their email. Um, That's part of this, uh, the sort of logon processes to provide the email address of each user. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yes, where there are tasks or actions to complete in the system, um, every user will be notified so that they know that they have to log in and uh, do something. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So is there any, are there any elements of the, of the tool that you think, you know, has real value, but you find people haven't quite taken advantage of yet? You know, it's sort of that there may be a few have gone, oh, that's golden. They've implemented it, but they haven't, you know, there's others just haven't taken advantage of those features. Yes, there is. Um, <laughs> I think the best part about Three Lines from a subscriber's perspective is um, that because I keep mentioning it, but we update the platform regularly from the back end. So any regulatory updates or industry updates that licensees need to be aware of, um, we're always updating those and they're flowing through to the advisors. And I think the best part um, is that we tell them not only what the update is, but also how they need to action it in their business. So if there is a requirement to update a policy or a procedure, um, we'll update that for them. Um, or we'll tell them that they need to do it and then they can add it as a task for the relevant person to do it. But they yep. always know specifically what they need to do um, and also then why they need to do it as well. Um, yeah, okay. One of the best ways that they can keep informed is um, to hold regularly um, or quarterly compliance committee meetings. Um, yep. And that's where we um, update those regulatory updates normally um, for licensees to know what they need to action. Interestingly, you could also, um, if if the idea is that the appropriate person is getting sort of nudged effectively of these updates, yes. then they could also then use that as a trigger to do a retraining with the team or to do it like you could use it as your way to sort of yeah, initiate absolutely. training was, through to the rest of the business. Was, um, 
that was the other thing I wanted to mention as well in terms of um, things that licensees can utilize in order to get the full potential of the platform um, is that we do have a trends analysis module as well. So as a licensee, um, once you've conducted representative client file reviews over your advisors you and you've built up a bit of data in the system, you really can pinpoint the problem areas that are identified across those advisor audits. And then okay. you can use that information as a coaching tool as well throughout the year. So licensees can use that and they can also um, compare how their license is performing against our global subscriber base as well, which is also a really insightful tool to see just to get an idea of broadly where they sit in the industry. So across our yeah. subscriber base. Absolutely. And and I yeah. that would be an interesting tool as well to help you potentially prioritize where your energy sits. You know, you could sort of look and go, hey, where yeah, are we? Absolutely. You know, not quite as high as we'd like to be compared to other right, let's just, you know, work on that initial because you can't fix everything straight away, right? You've got to <laughs> prioritize. Yeah, absolutely. Things. So you can see where your kind of your most um limitations have been identified in which areas of the advice mm. process and then also um, internally just for your license you can see who your um, more risky advisors are by way of who's had the most limitations identified in their reviews so they might they yep. might be because they have uh, um, like a sort of riskier authorizations as part of their service offering yes. so they might offer MDAs and things like that um, or it might be because they're just a bad advisor um, and there's sure. a lot of areas that they, that, they, um, that they need to improve on. So, um, yeah. And that's a great opportunity for coaching and training, you know, to help somebody sort of get up Definitely. to scratch. So you can see also not only the areas of advice, but also the individuals who might need an extra bit of support in their business. Yeah. And I think sometimes um, when we think about some of the areas that compliance covers too for, for, for an advisor that might have, you know, something that we get, you know, somebody can get a little, oh, you know, this is an area you've yes. got to focus on. Yes. The hard thing is translating that into change behavior. That's actually not easy to do, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, sometimes it's giving them another step in a process. It's a, a form or a checklist to, to review. It's a, like all sorts of things that um, they can still you know, essentially have the skills they need. It's just the way that they're applying them that can improve. I mean, they Absolutely. did that in surgery years ago and the um, the risk rate dropped rapidly because they applied checklists across surgeries. Like it's it's often just that. It's giving some structure to just help somebody go, oh, that's right, I just need to check that thing. Yeah, and um, that's the other beauty about having three lines consulting as our sort of uh, going hand in hand with three lines, the platform is that where licensees do need that extra support, but they might not be sure how to how to give that extra support. Um, they can lo get, log a ticket, and our three lines consulting team can help with yeah. proactive support like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then, what's on the you know what's on the development plan? What's into the future? Is there there's probably some things that are coming up in the near future? But is yep. I'd also love to hear if there's anything. Ooh, we'd love to you know down the track. Uh, yeah, any other absolutely. Things that are maybe maybe not certain, but certainly you know that you're a bit excited about. Yeah, so um, we've got a lot planned the next 12 months or so. So first up, um, the first cab off the rank is that we're building out an attestations area. So um, that will allow licensees to send out regular attestations to their advisor base. So mm -hmm. um, that'll be based on their specific requirements. So it could yep. include things like having attesting, having advisors attesting to their understanding of policies and procedures, yep. um, perhaps declaring conflicts of interest or managing their AML CTF obligations, um, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. So it'll be a kind of... Um, build your own attestation and then you can send yep. it out to your advisors. So we've had a lot of requests for that. So yep. that's the next sort of priority. Um, and then as the volume of data in the system grows or continues to grow, we're looking to add functionalities to that trend analysis that I just spoke about. So okay. there'll be more data available for licensees to take information for their training and coaching in the business. So that might relate to complaints, incidents and breaches, um, more of those sorts of more specific things. Um mm -hmm. And then you talk about the sort of blue sky ideas. So yeah. um, a little bit, I guess, further down the track, we are looking at um, adapting three lines to service the credit market as well. So credit providers and credit intermediaries. So there's a lot of um, businesses out, out there who hold AFSLs and ACLs. So they hold mm. a dual license. So um, then three lines would hopefully be um, really helpful to those businesses that are trying to make two sets of obligations. Yeah. So that's sort of the, the, yeah. the longer term vision. Um, <laughs> and then in the... In the shorter term, we're continually improving the user interface and um, the user experience, I guess. So that's we've got a few smaller projects in the pipeline for that. Um, and then you mentioned our RM Bootcamp earlier too, mm. Peter. So that's 
um, our other um, baby at the moment. So we've just launched that a few months ago, but we're continually updating that as well. So um, as I mentioned, it's an online course with nine lessons that are sort of the base uh, lessons for the RM, but we continually yeah. update that too with bonus lessons when there are reg updates that need to kind of be uh, communicated across across the industry. So yeah. we um, are continually updating that as well. So that's our other pet project at the moment too. Look, and it's a... It's 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 really valuable because the problem with the all the information out there is we then need to discern amongst it. You have to t- take time to discern what you need to update yourself on, and then update yourself. Exactly. <laughs> like, so we're trying to remove yeah. that and just give exactly. it to you, spoon feed it to license fees. Exactly. Um, just get the update. Remove all that time and effort spent <laughs> trawling through rent guides and corpse act and good knows what. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So it's yeah, I can see some some real value in in being able to get those updates and I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see down the track, way down the track and I know this doesn't really exist now, but sort of the preemptive compliance environment where tools like use, yours could almost be monitoring what's happening, you know, maybe pieces of advice so that then they can be fixed before they go out. You know, remediation becomes zero yeah, because we're catching them before they go. Absolutely. And we do have um, a pr- what we call a pre-vet um, component to the system as well. So that is purposefully designed mm-hmm. um, to review, give a, a quick check to advice before it goes to the client so that any of those small issues can be nipped in the bud um, before they become bigger issues retrospectively. So yeah, um, yeah we uh, we have that in place and we are always looking to expand on, on helping uh, proactive compliance rather than being reactive all the time. Perfect. Is there anything else we've missed? Any features we haven't covered? Oh, I feel like we've covered a lot and I've probably, yeah. probably reached your compliance threshold for the day, Peter. So, <laughs> yeah, I think we've covered everything. Well done, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, it is an interesting um, – it's an interesting balance, isn't it? Because what we're all aiming to do is be compliant. Um, but yes. what we have to spend a lot of time on is compliance. And I think any tool that can get us, you know, closer to just constantly being compliant is a better – a better place to be, right? Absolutely, Rather than yeah. feeling like, oh, now's compliance time. You know, I just don't think that's the way to operate going forward. 100% agree. And that's why we exist is to try and take the pressure off and um, make it as simple and easy as possible for licensees to become compliant and remain compliant so that they can do the things that they want to do, which is service clients, provide great quality advice, and then leave the office early and go and have some fun. Yeah. Woohoo, I love it. <laughs> All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out um, more about Three Lines or perhaps nudge your your business owner or license and you go, gee, this would be really good, guys, then the website link is in the episode show notes along with Julia's LinkedIn details. I'm sure she'll point you towards the right person um, if you want to reach out to her. Thank you so much for joining us here today and sharing sort of how three lines can just help make all of these sort of compliance and AFSL handling things manageable and so we can get busy, you know, engaging with the public. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Peter. Thanks so much for having me. So are you a current user of three lines? Now, the truth is that often advisors won't be necessarily aware of these tools as much as um, their responsible manager or client manager might be. But I am curious if you've utilized a tool like this and are finding it beneficial and adding real practice, uh, value, sorry, to the practice. So if that's the case, uh, please put your hand up on the Ensemble Community platform post, let people know how you've found it and uh, what your experience has been. In terms of my thoughts on this stuff, I think what's interesting is, you know, there's a need for us to be compliant, right? That's sort of the first level. Let's be compliant. But then there's also the need to capture that activity and record it, right? We've got to provide a trail, provide evidence. Um, and that's when things can become clunky and awkward, right? They really become difficult and you can spend an inordinate amount of time. Um, I've got a, a good friend of mine who's worked in um, outside this industry and has worked in very senior positions in marketing. And I remember her saying that, you know, nearly one week out of every month is spent by the executive team collating reports for the monthly executive team meeting. Now, <laughs> You've got a question that a meeting that requires one week out of four in just producing the reports for the meeting, right? That just seems crazy making and certainly not a good use of your executive team's time. Um, Imagine the bandwidth that could be unlocked by 52 extra weeks of activity from your executive team. And I guess that's what 
tools like Three Lines are trying to do is take out the manual nature of the compliance reporting and collation um, and tracking and prompting so that you can get busy just being in the business. Yes, you'll apply the time you need to apply, but you won't spend a whole lot of time just trying to keep on top of things. So I think it's just an interesting um, approach. And I certainly think more tools um, would add value in this area without a doubt. Um, And so, you know, as we uh, sort of go forward, I think there's an opportunity to therefore instead of seeing compliance as like, I've got to do some compliance, right? We can just be compliant and the, and the system will tag it. The system will track it. It'll note all the activity and all the wonderful advice and wonderful work that we all do um, will get recorded accordingly. So it's certainly heading in the right direction. Tech is perfect for this type of stuff. Um, And so personally, I'm excited about seeing where tools like three lines can go. Now, you know what's coming next. We've got to do our Curiosity Corner app, don't we? We've got to keep on developing that curiosity muscle so that we can become super-duper bionic advisors. Um, Now, the one I want you to take a look at this week is called Folk. Uh, you can find it at folk.app. That's F-O-L-K dot A-double-P. And this is another CRM, right? So I can imagine for advisors, it's not that you'd necessarily use, well, you certainly wouldn't use this for your day-to-day clients. But if you are undergoing some prospecting activity, right? Maybe you're interacting with people on LinkedIn, you're you're nurturing relationships, you might be going to business networking events to start to build a prospecting funnel, then this could be an interesting tool to check out because what they've done is amplified the tool with AI. So they've got the normal CRM fields that you would see in every you know, name, address, business, you know, all those sort of things in there. And they've got all sorts of clever ways for you to engage with that. So certainly it's got all the, the things you might expect. But what it's also got is something called magic fields. So you can be looking at the data and you can say, I'm going to add a magic field. And what you do is a magic field is a field where you ask AI via a prompt something that you want it to generate. So it could be a piece of data you want it to collect or or generate, or it could even be some text you want it to generate. So let's just run through what I mean by that. So if you're looking at a table of of prospects and you say, all right, for all of these prospects, um, I'm tidying up the data and I can see, oh, look, some of it's capitalized, some of it's not, it's really messy. Then the prompt in the magic field could be change the formatting for first name as a field and last name as a field, adding only a capital letter for the first letter, right? So it it would just tidy that for you, done, generate, tidied for the whole list that you've got. Or it might be that you've collected job title as one of the things that you've put in the, in the, um, in the database or in the CRM, but you want to sort of categorize it a bit better. So it could be categorize the field job title into one of the following categories and you tell it what four categories you want it to put it in. Now, once it's, and you generate, now once it's done that, you could just use that as a tag, which means you can then filter how you talk to those different categories and the, the comms you use. You could ask it if you've listed the company name that the person works for, um, you could the prompts you could put in for the field is in which industry is company name operating? Then once again, it'll pick an industry and you could use that as a tag, right? So it's just any of that digging you might otherwise manually do, you could use the AI prompt to do it across a full list of clients. This next one is interesting and I think this is where it could get really smart. So we've all probably heard of campaign, email campaigns, right? Where you send email one, then wait three days, send email two, right? And there's a certain ability to customize, but they all will generally feel the same, right? And can be repetitive if then you know, three months later, the same follow-up happens, the client gets the same follow-up, right? Or sorry, the prospect. So it can get a bit clumpy. What this could be is the magic field could actually be to generate text and the text could be an email. So write the body of a recruitment email, say, this might be a recruitment list, people applying for a job, to first name that's currently working at company name as job title to express interest in their profile for a potential position at your advice company. Make it feel professional, but relaxed, right? And now what's interesting about that is it's it's creating a template essentially, but it's an entirely different one per entry. So the AI will generate this relaxed but professional email using the fields you asked it to use, but every one of them will be different. 
So it's still batch, it's still an element of automation, but it's got some nuance and some difference. And I just think that's going to start to be interesting if we're reaching out to people, if we're just, you know, dropping them a line. It stops it being that same generic thing that we're sending out. Um, so it just, I, like, I'm not quite, don't quite have a handle on the best way to use it just yet, um, but I do think it's worth taking a look to see how AI is now being used within these tools as a just a clever way to get some real smarts. Let me know if you check it out and if you find a great use case, because I'm certainly curious myself. Welp, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tick fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you're stuck in a rut, your processes need some work, or maybe you want to collate the team together to get them revved up for the second half of the year, um, do some planning, do some brainstorming, even you know maybe get some insights on some tech that might help, then I'd love you to assist by facilitating a workshop. So please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter M. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.